our God and our Father, we bless you. Because you are indeed a faithful God, we bless you for the life of men in this church. We bless you for the headship that you have made us. We bless you for this is how far you have helped us. We keep counting in the life of this assembly. One, two, three, seven, ten, thirteen. It is the Lord's doing. We bless you for this. Father, be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus. For you made today happen. And we know you have prepared for us all the goodness and benefit. And I pray and I prophesy. No one will miss out in Jesus' name. Amen. As we celebrate this year, celebration will not cease in our respective homes in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, your word is going out. Your word indeed, you speak to your people through me in the name of Jesus. Amen. At the end of it, Lord, let's glorify your holy name. Amen. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Let's have our seat. I bless God Almighty for the grace and privilege to stand in front of the men, children of God. And I want to congratulate the entire church, the household of God, for this is the celebration of every one of us. When the head of the family is celebrating, everybody is involved. I thank God for the life of our people, our, 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 the, the pastorate, our DS. The assembly pastor, the youth pastor, my colleagues, elders, I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Where the theme of this celebration is what? Glorious pay setters. Glorious pay setters. That is the theme. Who is a pay setter? You can be a pay setter, but it may not be glorious. Okay? A person or group that serves as a model to be Im imitated is a pesetter. Somebody who can gladly, confidently copy it is a pesetter. Sometimes you have the privilege of seeing your pesetter, your role model, and sometimes you read about them, isn't it? But anybody that has lived a fulfilled life to the extent that you can make reference to them is called a pay setter. But who is a glorious pay setter? You know it's not all achievement that comes from God. You remember what every, anything that God can do, Satan can do what? Hello? Satan can always produce what? They can't tap it. Anything at all. That is the way God has arranged it. But the Bible says it is the blessing of God. That make it rich and does what? And has no sorrow. So, when you are talking of glorious Peseta, we are talking of people, men and women, who have the achievement under the arrangement of God, under the fear of God, under the obedience of God, and in accordance with the standard set by the word of God. Praise the Lord, somebody. A Peseta is a clear leader. Somebody that has made success of all his endeavors. An excellent leader. An achiever. And so widely acclaimed. Your Bible will say, in fact, if I think the Bible says, in the presence of two or more witnesses, the truth shall be what? Shall be established. A pay setter. Can I hear it? A pay setter. Today, I'll be talking to us on glorious pay setter. Who is a glorious pay setter? Everyone created by God. He say what? Is a place pay setter. Why? If you look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, it says, God created man in glory. God created man in what? In honor. God created man as a clear leader over all other what? All of creation. He did not just create man. He created man in his own image. That is, man represents the phenomenon called God on earth. So, at inception, we are all created as what? Pay setters. But the question is, why are people, level of success, why is it different from each other? Why are you working and you're a billionaire? And other people are working and they still not, cannot get above poverty. Praise the Lord somebody. Hallelujah. God loaded us with wisdom at creation. 
he loaded us with benefit. We have the willpower. We have the knowledge. He gave us understanding. He loaded us with natural talents and abilities to acquire the skills that we needed to be a true God workman. workman. Indeed, being an image of God, man was a glorious presenter at creation. But ladies and gentlemen, if we are all created as presenters, glorious for that matter, at creation, what then happened? Of course, you know the story of Adam and Eve. The first man on earth. You know what happened to him? Even after he fell, can somebody open the book of Revelation chapter 5? Even after he fell, we have God arrange a reconciliation for us through Jesus. And what are we through Jesus? You can see in that book of Revelation. Quickly, I have just 30 minutes. If you can help me project, I can be reading it if I don't have a Bible reader in the house. No, 512. Say in a loud voice. What is the lamb that was slain? To receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory. Don't close it. What is the lamb that was slain? Who was he slain for? He was slain for you and I. And the book of Psalms, I think Psalm 62, says we are God's. For as many of us that have given our life to Jesus Christ, that have accepted him as our Lord and Savior, what has given us? He has replicated himself in us. And what does he say there? What is us who has accepted Christ? Glorious are we in Christ because he has given us what? Riches. Can you read it again, Mom? Yeah, baby. Riches, power, wisdom and strength, and honor and glory. And blessings. Praise the Lord somebody. Hallelujah. This is what we are in God. But is it automatic that we can awkwardly talk about our inheritance and talk about being a glorious peseter? Yes, we are all glorious peseter. We are created as one. But I want to tell us today, before you can become truly a glorious peseter, because you are able to achieve the plan and expectation of God for man at creation. I'll be talking on my sermon title, Walk. Somebody say walk. W-O-R-K. Walk as a means of fulfilling our destinies. You cannot just be a glorious pace setter if you don't have work. W-O-R-K. Work is the only means of fulfilling God's destiny for our lives. God ordained work. When God created the everything he has created, and what did he do? He created Adam and Eve. And he made them his what? His workmanship. No, his workmen. He told them, go to the garden of Eden, take care of it, mend it, Work it. So if you want to actually maintain your position as a pay setter, as an achiever, you must be, you must do what? You must work. Even when Adam and Eve fell and God was going to chase them out of the Garden of Eden. I'm in Genesis chapter 3 verse 17. What did God do? God caused the land he has created. And he says, through a painful toil, they will eat. You know there are so many mineral resources inside the ground. What is the, the only resource that we rely on today in Nigeria? Is what? Where is it? Where does it come from? You know the beauty of God? We might be sitting on several tons of oil as we are here. Until man is able to wake up and walk the ground. That is where you can have access to the goodness and the benefit that God has eaten under the ground. Praise the Lord somebody. Hallelujah. But remember, success is a personal issue. The way you define your own success 
is different from the way I define my own success. The way you want to live your life is different from the way I want to live my life. Everybody was given the same opportunity at what? At creation. We are all loaded with benefits. What is the benefit we are loaded with? We are loaded with strength. Yoruba will say, Atela Wuaniki Sekini, Wuntani Je. God gave you the strength. Even if you say you don't want to apply your mental talent, what about your physical ability? Praise the Lord, somebody. What is the plan of God concerning work? What does God really looking out for? When he say we should go and walk the ground. Is it just a cause unto us? No. And if you see what is happening this day, you see, if you are able to walk the way God wants you to walk, what will happen? Abundance will follow. Number one, if you walk as you ought to, God will supply all your needs. Prophet, I'm not praying. It is not prayer. I said, if you walk the way you are supposed to walk, because God remains what? Ever faithful. He says, show me your faith, and I will show you my, my work. W-O-R-K. Proverbs 6, verses 6 to 8. He refers us to the story. You know the story of the hands. He says, you sluggers, go to the hand. The lazy ones, go to the hands. And go and learn what? Their deeds and be wise. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 11. He said, he who works his land will have what? Abundance. Whatever it is you are able to do with your seed will determine your harvest. What is the seed that am I, am I talking of? I'm talking of those talents that God has implanted in you. He gave you mental knowledge. He gave you the willpower. He gave you the ability to appreciate things. He gave you clearly defined opportunities, resources. It's a function of what you are able to do with them. When you talk of being a glorious presenter, it is not an automatic thing. How many of our successful businessmen in this country that you hear of generations, have you ever heard of their name here again? For some of us who are above 60, there used to be a man called Darosa in this Lagos. And even the Yoruba, it became a saying, I don't know, I have never had any children of Darosa after he left. What are we talking about? Very successful. Your inheritance is in God. Your what? Your inheritance is in God. But God is not going to drop anything automatic. You have to do what? Work. Tell somebody beside you. Work. 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 If you work, you, you live in abundance. Proverbs 10 for lazy hand make a man poor, but diligence bring wealth. Romans 20, I mean, Proverbs 20, 13. He said, Do not love sleep, or you will grow poor. Stay awake, and you have to you have food to spare. He's not just saying you are going to have food to eat. He says you what? Have food to, to spare. 1 Corinthians 9, 24. He says, Know ye not that they, they, that they which run in a race run all, but only one does what? Receive the prize. And what did he say? It's a commandment. He says, Run. Somebody say, Run. run. That you may obtain the prize. How many of us want to obtain the prize? How many of us want to obtain the prize? The next question is, which price? What goals have you set for yourself? What goals have you set for yourself? What is your vision in life? What is your mission in life? A lot of us don't have a direction. We are just walking in what? In cycles. I'm talking of work. Many of us, we walk, we do 8 to 5, and we come home. When God has given you 24 hours in a day to work, and you are just satisfied with mere living, subsistence living. You work for somebody, and he says, resume in my office, 8 to 5. And you go there to resume. And after 5 o'clock, you go home. You say, thank God for the day's job. And you wait for 30 days. How can you be a glorious pay setter? How can you be a pay setter? 
when you are already limited your own vision, when you are already limited your own ambition, when you have actually placed a restriction on the enormous facility God has given unto you, don't you know the entire world belongs to who? Belongs to who? It belongs to God, but you are who? God says, ye are God's. Your inheritance is this entire world. But how can you work eight to, eight to five? You go back and you say you want to be a glorious space setter. I'm saying being a glorious space setter is a function of the target and the vision and the mission that you have for yourself. What is work? Praise the Lord somebody. What is work? It's a means through which mental pictures or visions come to reality. Work is a means through which our dreams have been transformed into physical existence. No wonder the book of Habakkuk, I think chapter 1, verse 2 or 3, says, write the vision down. Make it bold. Even when it tarries, what does he say? Wait for it. It must surely does manifest. But it will not just surely manifest if you don't work it. Praise the Lord somebody. You need to work that vision for it to manifest, for it to come into physical existence, for people to see it, for people to feel it. Ladies and gentlemen, God has given us a clear vision at creation. He created you as you are. You are not two individuals. It is you. And you have to def define who I am. How do you define who you are? You need to find out who you are. You need to know yourself. Many of us don't even, we don't even know the strength that we have. Many of us, we don't know the talent that we can play up. A lot of successful people, go and look at, go and read about them. They are brilliant academia. But when you talk about them, it is, most times, it is not the knowledge they acquired or the discipline they study in the university that actually make them what they are. It is one other talent that they have to play up combined with education. If somebody that has a first degree, I always tell people, somebody that has a first degree, if he's selling pure water, will he not do it differently? Somebody selling a uh, block, if he's doing it, will he not do it differently? Why? Because he has education. And, ha and what does education do to you? He exposes you, broaden your mind, gives you maturity of heart, and of course, emboldening you to do what? To take risk. Praise the Lord somebody. Work is the ability, is the application of your physical strength and mental power to make things happen. How many of us have flown an airplane before? Have you ever flown an airplane before? Oh, if you are, can you wake up your hand? Praise the Lord. If you have not, the grace will come upon you to fly. I tell you, aeroplane is one thing you don't want to fly. Have you ever seen somebody, something in an enclave and it's going at a, a, thousand, a thousand kilometers per hour? Can you imagine it? And you are just there. But how did aeroplane come to pass? In a church gathering like this. One man, who is, highly, who is a highly placed elder, he said, he looked and said, Reverend Father, you know what? I have a vision. That one day, man will be able to fly in the sky. And the, the man said, abomination. He says, you know what? Our Bible says, Can you understand that? He said, he has committed the greatest abomination. To say man will fly like an angel. Do you know what happened? 100 years after, the twin of the same man, they call them the Wright brothers. They are the first to fly a aeroplane, to introduce a aeroplane. That is the power of working your vision. It's not just about thinking, dreaming. You can dream, but until you are able to work your dream, nothing will happen. Vision will show you the pictures of what can be or what to come. But a vision without mission, that is a vision without work, is just a mere daydream. God demands that we work every vision to fruition as evidence in the lives of the following great achievers of God. 
Covenant of God, God is not a liar. He's not the son of man that will lie. As he said a thing that will not come to pass, but let me tell you, whatever God said concerning you, if you don't work it, it's not going to come to pass. Don't say, I can go be as calm as a prophet of doom. That is the truth of it. Because God says there is no more manna coming from in from heaven. Even when manna was coming from heaven, what were they doing? They are just mere assistance. Are you for bread and butter alone? Don't you want to do exploits? Don't you want to be a millionaire? Don't you want to be a billionaire? Don't you want to enjoy the good things of this life? If you just work to earn mere subsistence, that is how you be counting. And when you become age 60, they will retire you. Okay? And then you'll be a pensioner. And then they will send you back to the house, to your village. And the people will say, They know how to, to, to give, give that kind of acronym. Look at the life of Abraham. Hello, somebody. I'm talking about examples of glorious presenters from divine arrangement. These are people that God has actually spoken to. God made pronouncement concerning them. Just as he made pronouncement concerning you at creation. When he says, go and subdue the entire world. Go and dominate the entire world. Go and use them for your, for your benefit. Abraham in Genesis chapter 13 verse 2. You know his story very well. You remember God took Abraham during the day. He took him to the hill. And he says, see, as far as you can see, I'm giving you the entire world. What would Abraham have seen that day? What would the normal eye have seen? But he used his visionary eye to see the entire world. He took him at night to say, look at the stars. And that your descendant will be as many as the stars. How many stars could we have seen that day? Visionary. Yes, you need to work it. Abraham worked it, and today, everybody prays. Eh? Abraham, blessings am I. Praise the Lord. Isaac is son. Isaac would have relied on the inheritance created by Abraham. Isn't it his father? But what did he do? He worked. W-O-R-K. He never, never relied. And this is a lesson for most of us parents. Don't unnecessarily expose your wealth to your children. Let them know the value of money. Let them earn money. A lot of us, when you are, because God has blessed us, you allow your children to fly in business class because God has blessed you. What is the value in that? Even a Bill Gates, he says, my children, the only thing I, they hold, I hold them is to give them good ed education. Bill Gates, his children fly in economy. He doesn't care. When his children are on holidays, many of us Africans, including me standing in front of you, we are the only one that go on summer holidays. The children of the very successful ones abroad, they go to do summer work. They go and earn money. And they will be excited when they earn the first $10. Okay, Dad, I work for five hours today and I earn $10. But many of us, what do we do? We are necessarily exposing and jeopardizing the future of our children. The future of the great, of the pay setters that God has given unto us. Let's watch out. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. You know the story of Jacob? I need to run now. Of course, jo jo Joseph is also there. Remember Daniel? You know his story? You remember ne 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 uh, Nehemiah? For all the people that were mentioned in the Bible as glorious, defined persecutors, they walk. Nehemiah was just a mere what? Steward. They, I have never seen the Bible where they mentioned the name of his, the king of his uh, village in the Bible. But Nehemiah was recorded. He worked his destiny because he knows who he was in God. Let's quickly look at the story of David. That is where I want to bring all the learning points together. We read from where? We read from where? Can you open your book? So, Bible to 1 Samuel chapter, um, chapter 16 from verse 1. Let's quickly take some learning from the story of David. No, no, no. Don't read. Thank you. Thank you. Who was David? 
Son of Jesse. David was the son of Jesse. A shepherd. Anointed what? King. In the land of where? Israel. Have you ever seen anybody that is not from a royal family being anointed king? Has it ever happened? Can they just wake up today and say, I can go be, or they pick my child at your middle and say, we want to anoint you, anoint you the prince of Wales. Is it possible? But you know what? We are all children and prince and princesses of the most high God. All we need to do is to pre present ourselves as instruments of honor unto God. Praise the Lord somebody. God condemned who? Saul, King Saul. And he told the prophet, go to the house of Jesse because I've chosen who there. He said he has chosen a king there. And the prophet himself was shocked. Said, ah, Jesse is not a from royal family. Royal blood doesn't flow through them. How come? Baba, God. And God said, go to the house of Jesse. And for him, for the family of Jesse to qualify for that priesthood, and for that, uh, what's the name? Eh? Can't you? You know what God did? He said, first consecrate them unto me. How many of us are here have given our life to Christ? Hello? Have you given your life to Christ? I can't hear it. I thought I want to hear a chorus. So you have been consecrated through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ into the priesthood of God. Praise the Lord somebody. God did not just say, do go and do this. He said, he should consecrate them. By that special anointing, God consecrated them to kinghood. And what happened? When he got to the house of Jesse, he says, how many children you have? They present, how many children did he present? He presented seven. And God said, no. None of these seven. He said, you did all your children. What happened? He said, but can you quickly go to Fast, uh, I want us to read it. Fast what now? Fast 11. He said, so ask Jesse, are these all the sons you have? And there, there is this young guest. Jesse answered, but he's tending the sheep. What has happened to, Joseph, uh, to David? David has been consigned into frustration. He's, been called, he's, he's in labored and hopeless child. Nobody reckons with him. And he took the intervention of the prophet to say, ah, are they all lost? Oh, there's one useless boy in the farm. He's so useless, he cannot live up with us in the, in the house. Eh? No, They treated him like leper. They frustrated him. And at what age? Just age 17. But immediately he stepped up. What happened? God told Samuel, anoint him as king. The question you want to ask is, what did God see in the life of David, a 17-year-old boy? Quickly, oh, sorry. What did God see? One, a lot of us will give excuses of our circumstance today. Oh, my father died 20 years ago. I don't have any help. Oh, I'm just a mere house boy. I'm just managing to be. I can't find any help. Oh, you'll be giving excuses and talking about your frustrations. Joseph, I mean, David never did any of that. What did he do? David, I was consigned to the bush. He worked his talent, his physical strength, his mental capabilities. He got knowledge right inside that bush. He developed himself. You know, he, he keep mentioning something. We're going to get there. When he said, you defy the God of what? Israel. How did he know about the God of Israel? Inside that bush, at that tender age, many of us, we are, we are retired from reading books. Where knowledge is. They say you want to hide anything from a black man. Where do you put it? Our, our pastor will always say, I have read seven books this week. And people will look as if it's just a mere saying. Where do you get your knowledge from? 
How many books have you read, read this week? This year, how many? Many of us, we are reading books, so ask me which book we are reading. Fictions. Even at age 60, you are still reading uh, what, what, what do you call it now? Miss and book. There is one that called Lover something. So no, honey. You are thinking of how you say, Hello, my sweetheart. How you, what, you are looking for how to compose text messages to your boyfriend, to your husband, to your wife. How would that add value to your life? David got knowledge. And it was the application of knowledge and skill that he had. He was working what? He was working his destiny. David acquired experience in the bush. He turned frustration, rejection, hatred, condemnation to blessings. He found value in what he was doing. When David was concerned to go and tender the sheep, he found what? Value in it. A lot of force. You don't find value in work. He said, and check out here. Look. I can't even wait for five o'clock to come. You don't even find value in what you are doing. How are you going to make it in life? How are you going to become? How are you going to be a pay setter? How are you going to be even a glorious pay setter? This is the life of David. This is what God saw in David. When God had to change, remember what God says. He says he will substitute, is my time up? He says he will substitute life for what? For life. God has a perfect arrangement for each and every one of us. Provided you are ready to play your own part. And the only part you need to play is to walk your destiny to fulfillment. Somebody say, walk your destiny. That was what God saw in the life of David. You know, even Jesus Christ says, he can, even if children, men, refuse to serve him. He said he can do, who, who uses what? If God can use stone to be his instrument, how much more you that is a phenomenon of God? How much more you that is an image of God? How much more you that is created with talent, with gifts, with strength, with capabilities as God? Praise the Lord somebody. And let's begin to look at the story of David. If David said at the age of 17 he's been anointed king, and he went to sleep, do you think he will become king? Do you think he will become king? Many of us have had prophecies that we're going to make money in life. Many of us have been told by divination that we are kings and princesses and we go to sleep. Ladies and gentlemen, don't go to sleep. Walk your destiny. Tell somebody beside you. Walk your destiny. And that's the only way we can become a glorious peace setter. There's something about work and working our destiny. And what is that? Something about location. Somebody say location. location. You must be properly located to be able to fulfill your destiny. How many of us are from Lagos State here? Tani Babeiko, we all came from villages here and there, isn't it? What are we looking for? opportunities. Twice, David was properly located. Number one, King Saul, remember he has been abandoned by God, isn't it? Said the spirit of God has left him. And he has mental what? In fact, he became sick and had that mental illness. What was he looking for? He was looking for somebody who can sing to, for him, isn't it? He was looking for somebody who can calm him down through what? What now happened? Somebody said, he said, can you find me? Can you do what? Can somebody quickly read 16, 17? He said, can you find me somebody because of our time? Let me read from here. Provide somebody that can play well and bring him to me. And what did they say to him? One of the servants answered, I have seen a son of Jesse of Bethlehem who knows how to play the harp. He is a brave man and a warrior. He speaks well and is a fine looking man. The Lord is with him. Praise the Lord somebody. Hallelujah. Say the Lord is with me. Lord. Yes, the Lord is with you. But the Lord that is with you will only complement the effort that you put across. When David was inside the bush, he learned the heart of what? Singing. When he became lonely, you know, and when, maybe when you need to call one animal that has strayed, that is when you learn how to, 
you know, land, the land, the, 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 what do you call it? The voice of, uh, of the animals. When he heard the bird sing, he converted the frustration to opportunity. And that was one thing that announced him. And what do you think he went to do in the house of Saul? God anointed him king. And God created problem for Saul. So that the life of David can do what? Can manifest. But if David did not have what it takes, at that point, he was looking for somebody who can play the guitar. He was looking for somebody who can sing. If David did not have any of that, who would teach him inside the bush? He thought what? Stop giving excuses. Tell somebody beside you. Walk your destiny. Praise the Lord. And what happened? God placed David. He finally placed David in the, in the palace so that he can do what? He can go and learn the heart of leadership. If he never had that need that the king needed, will he be able to get to the palace? You say, God has had that divine arrangement for me. I'm waiting for the manifestation. It is you that will work the manifestation. Praise the Lord, somebody. Again, quickly, from 1 Samuel chapter 17, you know that David was actually the one that rescued the Israel, Israelite from the hand of the what? Or the Philistines. What happened at that point? Again, David was properly located. When he was located, what happened? His father said he should go and give the food, food to his brothers on the battlefield. When he got to the battlefield, what did he see? Where a lot of people could see dejections, frustration. David saw one thing. He saw opportunity. He looked at everybody in the house. Ah, why is everybody dejected? He was wondering in his heart. And then, bitter, the Philippine, the Goliath came out. And then, the Israelites did what? They all ran away. He said, what is happening here? He inquired. Inquiry brings what? When he was inquired, what was he looking for? Information. When he got the information, what did he do with it? He processed it. When he processed it, what did he do? He took action. But was he able to take action if not the level of preparation he has had? He was only able to take action based on his level of preparation. Okay? He took risk. Based on the level of preparation, profile yourself today. Do you know what it means to say profile yourself? Analyze yourself today. What capability do I even have? Many of us don't know. You went to school. You read economics. You went to school. You got a PhD. But I can tell you, maybe there is one particular thing inside you that God wants you to play up. Preparation, principle of preparation, what does it do? It enhances your confidence level to take risk. And that's exactly what David did. He saw a difficult situation. He looked at himself and he said, oh, this is a way to fulfill my destiny. And he stepped up. When he stepped up, what did he do? There was application of skill. What did he do? That is again the application of knowledge. Remember when they asked him to go and give food to his, uh, to his brothers? He carried his pouch. Many of us, we come to church, don't even have a Bible. Many of us, we come to church, don't even have a jotting paper. You just come to listen and go. There's no time to do quiet time. There's no time to read the Bible. There's no time to reflect. Yet, you are holding on to faith. My God will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. Amen. Yes. God can do that. God can do that. But it's not what? Automatic. Praise the Lord somebody. He went with his pouch. And he said, he now profiled himself. Pay attention to details. Many of us, we neglect the most important thing. We do the most important thing. But that little thing that will make a difference to our life is what we leave out. Leave out. Pay attention to what? Details. So pay setters, they always take very tough decisions. If you take a decision that will, uh, you can easily achieve, and you will get the level of achievement that will match that. But David, he profiled himself. He said, when I was in the bush, a bear came. I did this to him. When I was in the bush, lion came. A lonely 17-year-old boy, he profiled himself. And equally remember knowledge. The God of Israel did this for me. 
So this giving my strength, giving my capability, along with the God of Israel, I will defeat this man. I want to ask you, what did he use? His catapult and stone. What killed Goliath? Is it the catapult? Is it the stone? Is it God? Hello? This is not Bible class. I won't dwell further. But the point is, God can always kill Goliath to defeat him for the people of Israel. But he needed to walk through somebody. God will not come down from heaven to use angel any longer. He's going to use you. No wonder when God was going to reconcile man to himself, he has to physically come down as a human being. What am I saying to you? You can go and pray for 365 days in a year. It's good to pray. God answers prayer. After all, he says, when you call upon me, I will answer. And I will show you great and mighty things which you know it not. And when he now shows those things that you know it not, if you are not able to work it, what happens? Hello? Praise the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, we are all created as peacemakers. It is up to us to hold our destiny in our own hands. Work it. And you see the Lord helping us. Ladies and gentlemen, it, education is good. Knowledge is good. The fear of God is good. Faith is good. But most importantly, if you truly want to be a glorious and defined pace setter, you need to work. You need to do what? Work. And when you are working, don't forget relationship. This morning we saw a very proud successful man. Isn't it? And you know what the Bible says? Even when you rely only on your own strength. What does the Bible say? Remember the story of the wealthy man? Only walk on. How do I say that in English? Eh? He said, my soul. I have achieved so much. And what did God say? He said, you stupid man. Today, today, thy soul will be taken off you. Don't forget God. You need relationship. No one succeeds alone. No one fails alone. You need relationship. You need the help of God. You need the help of man. Who announced David to Saul? Are they not the servant? Are they not the servant? And when David eventually was going to be made king, how was he announced to the people of Israel? By defeating Goliath. He step up. He step up. He step up. And it was a lot easier for David to do what? To fulfill his destiny. Go to the life of Je Je Jesus. Man that God sent to come and rescue us. God himself. But he walked like a man. Isn't it? He did what? Walk like a man. When Jesus entered the temple and was teaching, where, where do you think he got that from? Hello? Where he was teaching, where do you guys he got it from? Well, he said Jesus did not start his what? His ministry until age 30. For those age 30, he was going to learn reading the book of the law, acquiring knowledge, preparing himself, physically, mentally. When it was time to pray, he stepped aside to go and pray for 40 days and 40 nights for spiritual power. But before he did that, he subjected himself to all the necessary training to create capacity for himself. No wonder Jesus Christ, as man, succeeded to be a glorious peacemaker. Can we rise up on our feet, please? Ladies and gentlemen, I want to congratulate you for knowing Christ. I want to congratulate you for giving your life to Christ. But I want to, you to ask yourself the question, are you living the way God wants to live? Have you achieved the way God wants you to achieve? God created us for one reason, and that reason is to worship him and fellowship with him, and to be of service to humanity. When you cannot even earn enough to take care of your own family, how can you be a glorious peace setter? You can be glorious in many ways. As a husband, you saw one example today, as children, as wife, as elder, as Christian generally, because people don't read the Bible any longer today. They look at individual. Ah, 
Or when you had a career, you a Christian longo, isn't it? Work is important. Finding and creating your life's work will bring you more abundance. And every inch of the way makes you a glorious pesetta. Can you, what do you call it? Um, instrument house, I'm ready for you. There's something I want you to see. Work, as discussed, is a physical activity through a process. It has a lot to say about our relationship with God. Psalm 16, verse 3. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and your plans will succeed. Colossians 3, chapter, uh, chapter 3, verse 23. He says, whatever you work, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, with all your might, as working for the Lord, not for men. Ladies and gentlemen, are we there? There was somebody in 1945. They called him, you see, S.O. Odojo, talking about work in those days. And I want to quickly recite it for us. Only Isha ni ogun Isha. Murashi Isha ore mi. Isha la fin diye ni giga. Bi akobara ni fe inti. Bi o le la ari. Bi akobara ni gale. A tera ma Isha ni. Iya are le lo wo lo wo. Baba are si le le sin le kan. Bi o bag bo ju le wo. O te tan ni mo so fun e. Shaky lay, Tojo, Untia Bafara Sefu, Nick Pelloweni, Akpa Lara, Igokani Gaka, we are by your bamfi alone, eh? Be your bad low power, my fear lola, but be your one equatata. I yea, yea, sit and tell, eh? Jaco, Danitin Rago, go to buy a serum, Monsieur. I come back for my team, Sakiri. I'm a good boss. She's a rani. We're a she's a rani. He's a loving that nigga. Shout hallelujah! Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh -huh. Yeah, for do John 1945. Uh -huh. So let's take this prayer. My God and my Father, let your glory locate me anew. You are going to offer that prayer with all your strength. Let your glory locate me anew. Are we praying?